Hello, everybody. It is weekly crossover for Locked On Big 12, Locked On Sooners, Locked On Horn Frogs, and Locked On Cougars. On today's show, the Jordan Addison situation, a general take on NIL, some specific takes on NIL. How do we fix it? Where is it going? What can we do? All that's coming up and more on today's show. You are Locked On Big 12. Your daily podcast on the Big 12 Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Once again, hello everybody, Josh Neighbors. I am the host of Locked On Big 12. If you're watching on YouTube to my left, it is John Williams. He is the host of Locked On Sooners. Below him, it is Stephen Simcox. He is the host of Locked On Horn Frogs. And then Jake Hatch, he is the host of Locked On Cougars. Uh, We're all here. It's all a crossover. It's a weekly crossover that we do. Today's topics, discussing NIL, and really the big story this weekend was this Jordan Addison situation. Blitnikoff Award winner was getting approached last week by other teams. It sounds like USC was the big one. While he was still at Pitt, had not put his name in the transfer portal yet. He is now in the transfer portal now. We'll go over some more of the specifics, but I'll let everybody just kind of give their general thoughts when they saw this story happening. John, host of Locked On Sooners, I'll go to you first. Your general thoughts when you saw this Jordan Addison story developing. Yeah, I think the initial thing is just how are we going to approach players when they haven't even put their name in the transfer portal yet about transferring? I feel like that's the part of this whole NIL thing that's happening right now that is just really sketchy to me. And how it's not tampering, I'm not quite sure, but it's it's definitely creating a really interesting dynamic. You know, he mentioned that he wanted to develop his game for the NFL. Dude, you won the Bolitnikov. You caught 100 passes for more than 1,500 yards. You're ready for the NFL right now if you're draft eligible. You're already being mocked in the first round. You're fine. Yes, you're going to have a new quarterback at Pitt. It is what it is. It's just going to show people what you can do with a new quarterback. So, I, it, I don't know, man. It. It is what it is. The transfer portal is what it is. I'm happy kids get to transfer. What it's becoming now in combination with NIL is not, I don't think, what it was intended to be. Steven, this is the first star player that I think we've seen at a school have this stuff come up in football. I, I can't think of another example. Uh, Steven Simcox, locked on Horn Frogs. Uh, of, you know, I can't think of another example of a guy at a school where it's like people are coming to him while he is there. This is very Anthony Davis Pelicans, I want to be a Laker type stuff right yeah it is and i mean i understand why people are frustrated with it now i can't believe i mean lincoln riley he was so hurt by chandler morris and the alleged tampering situation that was happening (laughs) between tcu and oklahoma last year i don't think he would ever do something like this i feel like you know he made such a stink about it that he would never stoop that low um so i feel like everybody's kind of running around like chicken little right now and i understand like, this is bad. It's a bad look. Um, I feel like there's definitely things that are happening with name, image, and likeness right now because there's no guardrails that are negative for the sport and negative for the perception around the sport. Um, but at the same time, I mean, this is sort of a problem that is the NCAA's own doing. Uh, but, I mean, I get it as someone who uh, roots for and covers a team that is not exactly at the top of the food chain – when it comes to talent acquisition, this is sort of the doomsday scenario that everyone had laid out. That would be basically like group of five schools and smaller power five schools would just become farm systems for the blue bloods across the country right. that you take a guy who's maybe a little under recruited, you develop him, And then once he's really good and starts producing here swoops in the big money donors from other schools and then they take off. Uh, I think this stuff's going to level out eventually. Like, I, I feel like the market's going to correct, correct itself. I, at the moment, we got a lot of people who I just don't think understand how this works and they're just kind of throwing money like crazy left and right. Um, but in the meantime, it's not a good situation. I mean, I'll share briefly. Like, so Eddie Lampkin had a really good run towards the end of the season, TC basketball player, and he sent out a cryptic tweet like earlier this week. And there was some speculation that there were some teams that were tampering there and that there was uh, maybe some family in the background that was saying, hey, like you should test the open market. Like you should test the transfer portal and see if there's greener pasture somewhere. And 
that's not the intention of this, but it's sort of a byproduct of it. I feel like you got to take the good with the bad and eventually maybe whether it's the, the market stabilizing itself or, you know, regulation getting involved, there has to be some, uh, some more structure here to fix some of these problems. Jake on Saturday morning, that's, that's really when I saw a lot of this happening, there was more outcry on Saturday morning than I've seen yet. I mean, do you agree with this? Uh, yeah. And I get why people are saying it. Uh, the, the biggest thing for me with this is the, the people who thought that this was going to go the way that they intended it to go were misguided in their belief of that. Naive because, sports fan. <laughs> and that's the thing about this. Anybody who has watched college sports and knows the history of this sport, it's all about finding an advantage if you can find it. And if th- in this case, if you can go out and solicit a young man and say, hey, we'll give you X hundred thousand dollars or north of a million dollars to come to this school. I know you're playing at this school, but if you enter the transfer portal, you can jump over here and do it. We're hearing about the University of Texas. There's a wide receiver that got approached with a six hundred thousand dollar deal or something like that. The intentions of this were great, but I think anybody who is paying attention to the history of this sport of college football, the nefarious folks out there who are trying to just make a quick buck and trying to help out their beloved university, insert university name here, it was all but told that this was going to happen, and that's the sad part about it. Well, and can I jump in real quick and also say, like, I think uh, one thing that's happening here too is these players across the country are like more connected than ever between yes, right. yeah. between camps, between, you know, playing each other in high school, elite level competition, private training, whatever it is like guys are communicating with each other. And I think that's something that's going on here too. It's sort of like when college coaches say, Oh, well, I never talked with, I never talked with X school. Like I've never had a conversation with them, but there's things going on through back channels. There's mm-hmm. probably a lot of, Hey man, come here. This is what's going down. You know, there's there's money here. There's opportunity here. You need to get in the portal and and get to the school. Um, and that's like that's more above board. It's still kind of shady, but it's just again kind of as Jake said. Like this is the advantage that people are trying to take. It's very boxing promoter. Like uh, as somebody who is kind of in that world a little bit, like fighters and promoters in, in both MMA and boxing will always say stuff and like go back onto the year later. Like I will, I will never make that fight year later. That fight is actually made like who's, that kind of stuff. Who's the Don King of college football. Right. It, right. Exactly. I am Lincoln Riley. I'm not going to LSU, but I am going to USC. Tell you, I'll tell you that, you know, it's, it's not LSU I'm flirting with. Yeah. So for those of you all who don't know this situation, pit wide receiver, Jordan Addison won the Blitnikoff award last year. He is a sophomore actually. who has got three, three more years of eligibility because he played COVID year his first year. Um, he still goes to pit. He's, you know, he's going back to pit and rumors surfaced last week that schools were coming after him, mostly USC. Then it turned towards Alabama as well. And somebody either from Jordan Addison's camp or from USC or Alabama leaked this out to kind of put this out there and to really begin kind of the bidding war. I think my, my assumption is somebody from Jordan Addison's side of things. Then somebody told ESPN that Pat Narduzzi was calling Lincoln Riley to, I mean, to accomplish what I've got no clue. I'm not sure how that conversation. Well, we know, conversation. We, we know what he's trying to accomplish. He's going to ream him. He's, he's, he's going to chew him out. Right. But exactly. like, you know, is it, was he going to be like, Lincoln, do you know anything about this? And Lincoln, you know, he'd be like, <laughs> no, I've got no idea about this. I've got no I'm recruiting clue. wide receivers, but right. I'm recruiting, I'm recruiting wide receivers, yeah. but I'm, I'm not, not sure if I'm recruiting your wide receivers, wide receivers. your yeah. wide receivers. Yeah. Um, and I so from the transfer portal or from Pitt, they, I got I, it from the transfer portal. They might be, they might not be. Yeah. Um, this is, and so obviously this is the first time it's been super public. And then we had the Colin coward piece where he said, this thing might be around $3 million. Right. So, there's some stuff out of this I want to sort out. First, I just want to say my feeling when I saw this was like, I think I actually had the feeling for the first time I was like, this is out. Like this felt out of control to me. Like, I think I, I think we all kind of saw a little bit of our school and pit in this where it's like, man, this guy is at our school, Blitnikoff winner. You know, th- this could happen to any school here. Right. Uh, I, I know, you know, Zach Wilson, 
is top prospect went from BYU. Quentin Johnston right now is a top receiver receiving prospect and TCU's put plenty of defensive guys in the first round as well, especially under GP. OU, we don't have to go through the list of guys that have been, you know, we, it's all well known. And the fact that 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 you know people could come from the outside and try to entice him with offers. And, and these people, these people, all they have to do is just have one phone call with the coach, right? Or somebody related to the university and be like, Hey, look, I'm going to go do it. You know why? I'm not afraid of any punishment at all. That's why it feels off the rails. My, you know, John, you'd mentioned Jordan Addison talking about the NFL, whatever. Like I, I think the one thing I want to start off with that we have to acknowledge is we can't blame the kid at all. People are calling him, offering what is to him right now, life-changing money. It would almost be malpractice for him to not entertain this. Your football, we've talked about this a million times in this podcast, especially these roundtables. Your football life is so short. And if somebody's offering you $3 million a, a year, maybe, in college at 1920, you have, you have to take that call. Do any of us like it? No. But can we blame the kid at all? No. Do we think there's – I haven't seen any particular Jordan Addison blaming. But, John, do we think part of the reason we kind of feel icky is like the kid's out here trying to get his? Do you think that's any part of this, or are we all upset with the process? I think it's more process. I think most people are just kind of upset that this is what NIL has become still a lot of people who didn't want any part of NIL are kind of wringing their hands and saying, well, we told you so. And, you know, look at what happened. Um, I don't think there's a lot of player blaming. Uh, we'll save that for Quinn Ewers, but um, sorry, that's a callback to me ranting on Quinn Ewers and Steven telling me I was it's true. Yelling at an 18 year old kid. Um, I got you back Quinn. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I, I'm with you. If somebody's calling me up or if I'm getting back channeled, offered $3 million to come play at USC or Alabama or Texas, then yeah, you got to consider it. It's, it'd be foolish not to. I think what is troublesome is the process in it. I mean, all it takes is a head coach to talk in person with a position coach to talk in person with the player, the quarterback and have that quarterback send a text out and like, Hey, enter the transfer portal. This is what's coming your way. If you do, or the booster reaching out uh, through back channels. And it, it just, I don't know, it just creates a, an odd dynamic that I don't think is going to be good long-term. You know, I'm, I'm thankful to see Xavier Worthy, even though he's going to crush Oklahoma because he did last year, he'll do it again this year. I'm thankful to see him say, nah, I'm good. Like, I'm sure he's getting good NIL deal at Texas, but to turn down whatever he was being offered, through those back channels, I'm really happy to see that because it, like, at least a player is willing to stay where he's at and not just automatically jump ship at the first best offer. Steven, this reminded me of uh, the, the Xavier Worthy thing. It's a great point. Chris Humber wrote an article about it, and, and it was, and this is not Chris's fault. Chris does a great job, but yeah. it was almost like it was normal, right? I, I felt like I was reading a soccer article. It was like, you know, um, Chelsea fends off offer from Real Madrid for N'Golo Conte. Exactly. And I was like, I'm like, what's ha- I'm like, what's happening here? Like, you know, like, okay, Texas fans breathe, relax. Texas can can have a sigh of relief because a Power Five school was making a run at Xavier Worthy. He's not in the portal. His, his recruitment's not open. And I want to I want to ask you about about this, Stephen. Like, this version of NIL is not the one that we thought would even the playing field. This is like make the rich richer. If somebody's coming at Texas's best wide receiver. A guy who put Devontae Smith, a guy who called plays for a wide receiver, Devontae Smith, who won the Heisman, Heisman Trophy as a receiver. And somebody's like, I'm not sure I want to play with this guy. I could, you know, for, make more money down the road because I go make more money now somewhere else. And they obviously, once again, fended it off. Like, this was not the purpose of NIL, right? Right, Steven? No, it wasn't. And <laughs> I don't know. I remember when this was first, like, popping off and it it was like the, one of the issues here and it's interesting because you talked about like are we blaming the kids i don't think any of us are no. i feel like may, maybe i read too many message boards but i do think maybe like fans are just having trouble catching up to all this right like there's still a college sports fan that is like college sports it's wonderful 
I eat a corn dog and nobody gets paid and they just love the game and they just go to practice and then they go to biology class and they go to a formal on the weekends and it's a grand old time. They have two beers and they leave. Yeah. And it's like, no, that's not what's happening anymore. So I get like the whiplash for people who kind of follow this more casually or maybe just don't understand like what's going on behind the scenes. The reality is we know this has been happening for a while. It's just now more public, but this is the big problem. I mean, I think the college football playoff has already checked out a number of fans because even though one of the great things about college football is everybody has different expectations, like in pro sports, it's really all about winning a championship. Like you can, you can still enjoy pro sports if your team is building something, but ultimately like if you don't want a Super Bowl, if you don't make the NBA finals, whatever it is, it's disappointing. And college sports, one of the cool things about it, I thought was the citrus bowl is like a good thing for a lot of people. Or, you know, there's, there's programs around the country that their best season might just be making the Rose bowl and, and not winning, you know, national Utah. title. Utah. Um, yeah. So, so th- that's changed it. And now if you, have um you know rosters changing over all the time and guys just leaving then i think that takes a hit as well but it's not what we planned on and i i i feel like it's sort of a callback to i think we played this audio on this roundtable one time but lane kiffin was like hey you you think you're doing this right but you're not like you're not spending enough money and we've heard that from multiple coaches um and the reality is like, I know there's people doing their best. Like, I know there's people at schools across the country that are like, oh, well, we have a we have a great little program where everybody gets a two thousand dollar NIL deal. And it's 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 wonderful. Like everyone can, um, you know, open up a bank account and buy all their books with their NIL money. That's not what's happening anymore, friends. Like there's there's a bunch of old rich men who are bored and want to see USC be really good again. And they're ready to give a pit wide receiver $3 million. So that's that's where we're at. The market has kind of reset itself. Hey, don't call Dr. Dre old. Yeah, well, I mean, I think him, Will Ferrell, and Snip, well, I don't even sure Stoop cares anymore at this point. Um, Jake, so Steven just the college ball playoff. Do you th- I have this theory that if we got NIL simultaneous with the CFP expansion, we, you know, sure, the guardrails thing, like, I think that'd still be legitimate. But – Maybe the idea of like, you know, what's possible is a bit more expanded, right? I think more people at more schools are willing to spend more money if they feel like they've got more of a shot to make it, right? If you're Oklahoma State, you're probably willing to shell out more money if you know last year, kind of irregardless of result in Big 12 title game, you probably have a spot in title in, in the, the CFP, right? So maybe, you know, you're willing to spend more money because you feel like you, you got more access. People at Cincinnati, same way, whatever. Do you think the CFP being expanded simultaneous to NIL could have helped some of these things? I think in theory it could have. I'm not 100% certain that it ultimately would have had mm. that impact, but I think the the belief, you're right, the belief of a program, those boosters believe in, okay, if I just inject this extra cash into this program, maybe that pushes us over the pump, and then we do make it to the promised land in their mind. And So in theory, I think that probably could have helped with this, and we're expecting – playoff expansion at some point but okay. this whole thing right now is just so uh, man it's out of control and i'm expecting that there will be a course correction of some sort whether that's the ncaa stepping in or just the the simple fact that the market itself will kind of reset itself if these people invest let's say jordan addison gets three million dollars from usc if he goes out there at usc and bombs which i'm fully expect him to to shine let me be very clear about that but if he bombs spencer radler type situation what these boosters are gonna be like i'm not paying that three million dollars again next year they'll they'll find a new player to play that money to that is what's gonna be the interesting part about these these young men they got to understand that this is a very fleeting moment when you can make this money at the collegiate level if you make it to the nfl obviously you can make plenty of money but you have to perform because these boosters they'll yell that money away from me just as quick as they gave it to you if you don't perform all right that's what i'm sorry okay. one more thing to add just i think that's one of my concerns is the boosters that are willing to throw three million dollars at a guy 
they're really free and easy with their money. Like they're going to keep spending it regardless of how well it works out. Like that's a good point. They're you think so? I think so. Like, I mean, we, we they've been Don't doing switch. it for years. Like people have Don't been investing in Texas A&M yeah. like for years and there, there's been nothing to show for it. The, the name of the player will change, but the money is not going anywhere. Let's just put, let's just put it that way. Yeah, uh, that's where I, and, and I was of the mind that Jake was just a second, like that, that the market will correct itself as these players don't perform up to the standard they're expecting. So, but the guys that want to see their school really succeed are going to continue to throw uh, that money at those players. All right. So I, I agree to some extent, but like tennis, what Tennessee is doing is not sustainable. Like the amount of money they're, they're trying to get their collective, like, we, okay, we might think it is, but like they're gonna go nine and three at some point. Like it's like yeah. it's. I mean, like I, I'm sorry, but I've watched Josh Heupel's offense. They suck against good teams. Uh, you know, like they lost to Purdue, right? And that, I think they did, right? That bowl game, yeah, they lost. It was you know six and six Purdue. Like it was fun, it was cool, and they might get good players in there, but like this, like there are very few machines in this sport, and I think the machines gonna keep winning. Um, Clemson, one of the machines just got broken up too, which I think is a big thing that, you know, that's, that's going to have some impacts, but like, the, I think that there is the idea that yes, talent acquisition is the name of the game. Sure. But you know, there is going to be, like Jake said, a market, a market correction. Now the money is going to be there. I think it's just going to end up being more dispersed throughout more people. Like, I don't know how many Jordan Addisons you can pay. I mean, I'll be honest, like USC football was cool and hip and sure. There's some people out in Los Angeles who can get the job done, but at some point you're hiring and you're firing coaches, you're paying buyouts, you're paying guys $3 million a year for one season. It's going to take, and also a lot of these people want the influence too. That's one big thing about boosters is they want to feel involved. They want to feel like they have a say. If you're the man like this uh, John Ruiz in Miami who's putting the cash together for the Nigel Pax of the world, who's publicly speaking about Isaiah, the Isaiah Wongs of the world, I think there's a pretty – that's pretty out here that John Ruiz has a lot of influence, at least when it comes to Miami basketball, right? Like, okay, they made the Elite Eight last year, people. What – What's the next step? Is Miami all of a sudden going to be a final four team every single year? Like, what's, you know. Is John, Devin Shapiro out of jail yet, or is he still in the clink? <laughs> I'm not sure. I think he's, uh, he, well, didn't he get out at some point? I don't know. Nevin, man, he was just ahead of his time. Uncle Nev, we shouldn't Uncle have him for that. Um, you know, one more, sorry, one more thing that I just brought, thought of is, like, I feel like this is going to put a lot more pressure on coaches. You know, like, oh, yes. if, if Miami doesn't make a final four in the next, couple of years whoever their coach is how long is it going to be until he's looking for a new job yeah poor jim lanaga 70 whatever he is years old I, <laughs> like guys I, so this is what I, think about, I think this all the time like old ass jim lanaga is like who who is this man who, ruiz who <laughs> coming in and he's doing what and he's like Oh, but this means I got Nigel Pat. Oh, all right, he can do whatever the hell he wants. Oh, that's, that's, like, that's, that's why like, my yeah, that's why my guy Gary P is an analyst now. They put a QuickBooks <laughs> software in his computer, and he was like, "No, thank you, I'm out of here, baby." This, but this, this is what I'm saying is like it, it's like the the faces are going to change now. Yeah. The so the money might stay the same, but like the influencers and who's there and who's in control is up might roll in and out. So I, I don't know. I, I think that's one part of this too. The next part of this we have to get to, and I'll, let's do a quick word from our sponsors, is the NCAA response. Uh, and so we have a response. People might laugh at it. I actually find it to be semi-legitimate. You guys can laugh me off the stage when this does happen. First quick word from our sponsors. Today's show is brought to you by Built.com and Built Bar. Built Bars are the best tasting, best for you protein bar in the game today. They've got flavors like banana cream pie, raspberry, double chocolate, and so many more. They're delicious and new flavors are coming out all the time. 130 calories, four grams of sugar, and four net carbs. Uh, go to built.com today. It's built.com, promo code LOCK15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com today. All right. Ross Dellinger at SI does a great job. Uh, had an article today. Go check it out. Just look up Ross Dellinger, Sports Illustrated. It's one of his most recent articles about the task force 
that the NCAA is putting together. University admins are on a task force trying to finalize a new set of rules to basically help enforce the old recruiting rules, but apply them to NIL. That's what they're trying to do. And these rules are very much focused on boosters and boosters' involvements in recruiting. That's really where this is focusing. This, guys, this is the best quote from some official on this committee. Quote, we let this thing get out of hand, end quote. <laughs> uh, no shit. I mean, are we are we serious? We let this thing get out of hand. Yeah, just a bit. Just Understand. a bit. Century, right? Understatement there. of the century. Yeah, dude standing in front of Chernobyl says we gotta get <laughs> we let it get out of hand. You know, we maybe we could have treated this more seriously. Um, the NCAA board of directors will meet on Monday to approve a potential set of changes. Steven, I'm gonna go to you first on this one. Is this too little too late, or do we think there is a chance that a task force could come in? And honestly, they're going to do it retroactively, really, although I think this could end up in a court battle, um, trying to enforce some of the rules and picking up the Isaiah Wongs, the Nigel Packs, the Jordan Addisons of the world and saying, all right, in these cases, these boosters were clearly involved, or is it too little, too late, in your opinion, Stephen? I mean, does the NCAA still exist? I don't I don't know what, what they're really doing these days. Um, I mean, I'm all for regulation, and I actually think, the ideas here are pretty legitimate. I just don't yeah, I know. Too. I don't know how you enforce it because it seems like the playbook, you know, for anybody who wants to fight it uh, when it comes to NCAA regulation is lawyer up. And then in court, eventually they kind of find out, Oh, we don't really have much of a legal foothold here and they have to backtrack. I mean, Bill self, God bless him. is still coaching basketball games. I know he's not the only one that has issues. KU don't come at me, but it's just the first one that popped in my mind. Um, so I think it's probably too little too late, but I will say maybe there's some incentive here because as we said, it's not like everyone is benefiting from this new world. So if they can get the, you know, groundswell of universities and coaches behind them on, okay, yeah, we need to have some things in place to make the smoother process. Um, then it might work. I just wonder once you have regulations, like who's the first person to break them? And what do you like? What do you do in that scenario? Like, what is actually your, um, I guess, you know, power and authority in the, in the new look college landscape? But yeah, you better get it done before um, some of these schools start to break away and, and form their own their own super league. And maybe that's maybe that's the breaking point. That's a big point, John. I want to ask you about this. Like, the problem with the NCAA vi- investigations is they often take too long, right? So, you know, we talked about Jack Swarwick predicting a breakaway by, you know, the 2030s. Like, they can't, they can't, you know, pit a paddle around on this. If they're going to investigate, they need to investigate, find results, and punish. They can't do this by the old way they've done it. It would take forever, right? Yeah, and that's kind of what we talked about some last week is, and, and Stephen touched on it, what's the NCAA's responsibility in college athletics at all anymore? And if there's going to be a future league that doesn't include the NCAA, then if the NCAA wants to stay in power and still get theirs, then they need to move quickly on this. I think the thing that was really interesting in this article from SI was that the booster influence, the booster connecting with players, that's something that's not been allowed previously even. Like it it just says here, the new directives will highlight existing NCAA bylaws that outlaw boosters from participating in recruiting reminding member schools of guardrails that while in place for years have been bent and broken during the first 10 months of the NIL era. So I think that's really going to be, I think that's going to be the thing where they can really kind of have a foothold and and stand on is, Hey, this is not new. You've not like boosters have never been allowed to interact with players. And yet here you are over the last 10 months interacting with players. So, I mean, and you know, all the, the lawyers, the big collectives and in the article, it talks about, how people have the evidence that says they've been doing this all by the books. But if some, if somebody's offering Jordan Addison $3 million a year to come play at USC, then somebody's not doing something by the books. It's and not he's still a student at Pittsburgh. Yeah. He's st- while he is a student at Pittsburgh, it's clearly not by the book. It's either tampering by Lincoln Riley or it's booster involvement, which is also 
not allowed because they're an extension of the university by law. Well, because the, the big thing on the Jordan Addison thing is like, it, it sounds like USC made the push. And Alabama's was like, oh, we get involved in this. Yeah. This, 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 is, this is open for us too. Um, Jake, do we think this will work? Like, I, I here, so here's, here's the upshot for them. Okay. It appears that they had no rules. It really in, in place besides their old rules, which feel very enforceable. So a lot of people were like, F these dudes. They don't, they don't care at all, which means this, there's a lot of evidence that is probably readily available that you don't have to do much digging on to get. That's the upshot. So I don't yeah. think the NCAA would have to work too hard to find and punish and also fit the criteria of their recruiting rules. I would agree with that. And that's going to be the interesting part as, as to how the NCAA will go about throwing their weight around for lack of a better term. And uh, man, I I would like to think that they can do this. I, I truly would like to think this, but all the history recently suggests that, yeah, this is going to be an abject failure. So I, uh, I don't know. I, I guess I'm sitting on the fence here and saying I don't know, but I just don't think the evidence backs up them thinking that they can actually figure it out. But like, but but my counter to that would be like, we know people are contacting Jordan Addison. We know that. We know that. But like, like Pat Narduzzi last week is talking about like, yeah, we're so glad to have him here. Like, it's great. Like, we're sure. really happy he's still a Pit Panther. And, it, and now it's like, Colin Cowherd. It, okay, here's the thing. If Colin Cowherd knows the number uh-huh. before the kid hits the portal, yeah. then what are we talking about here? They're, they're gonna have, maybe Colin, Colin Cowherd the has has information on an illegal uh, on a rule breaking offer made to Jordan Addison, which I'm is with- which which he's just as as a proclaimed USC fan, he's just putting out there. He's like, you know what, NCAA, come come f come f USC because I'm just I'm going to give you the information. Like I, if I'm the NCAA, he's see. the first person I'm calling. I'm fully expecting uh, Jordan Addison if he does pick USC, all of a sudden he's gonna have an NIL deal to be on the herd weekly. Like, it'd be like, oh hey, we now we now know where that money's coming from. Now. He's gonna have his volume podcast, whatever the network is. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, but I'm, like, if I'm the NCAA, the first person I'm going yeah. like, Colin, listen, buddy, you yeah. mentioned on air there's a three million dollar offer where the kid was a pit panther. Huh? Can you say, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, um, that's they, they they do need to rein it in. I'm just not sure right. they have the regulatory power to do it. If that makes right. sense. That's fair. That's fair. All right. One more quick word well, and, from our. Oh, go ahead, John. Go right, ahead. I was yeah, gonna yeah, say go all the okay. all the politicians that were kind of pushing for this. I feel like they're also probably thinking, oh, we might have let this go a little too far without getting some regulations involved as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. I'm with you on this. I'm with you on this. Uh, all right. One more quick word from our sponsors. Uh, on today's show, we are brought to you by RockAuto.com. Go to RockAuto.com today for all the best prices on parts for your car or truck. The ever-increasing number of makes and models, it's impossible to go to your local chain or auto parts store to, to find all the parts that you need. Do not spend 30, 50, or even 100% more for the same parts that you need from a chain store or a car dealership. For example, a Honda Odyssey fuel pump, 353 from a chain store, 216 at rockauto.com, a family-run business serving auto parts customers online for 20 years. Rockauto.com, their prices are always reliably low. And the same for pros and do-it-yourselfers. Go to rockauto.com today. Write locked on in there. How did you hear about us box? That way they know we sent you. Amazing selection. Always low prices. All the parts your car will ever need. That's rockauto.com. All right, we're doing two of these, but at least for this one, folks, tell people where you guys can, they can find you and your work and all of its variety. John Williams, go first. Yeah, you can find us on uh, Twitter at Locked On Sooners, Facebook, Locked On Sooners Podcast. You can follow me personally at John Nine Williams. You can also read my work covering the Oklahoma Sooners at the Sooners Wire. Steven. I'm at Simcox Steven on Twitter. The show is at Locked on TCU, and we are Locked on Horn Frogs on podcast platforms and on YouTube. Jake. Locked on Cougars, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Search it out there if you want my work. Uh, Jacob C. Hatch is my Twitter handle, and, of course, the show is available on YouTube and everywhere else you get your podcast. You guys can find me on Twitter at Josh Neighbors underscore. Find the show where you get your podcasts and on YouTube as well. All right, thank you guys for joining us. There's a part two coming up about Big 12 expansion. Make sure you check that out.